Night was a very different matter. It was dense, thick and very, very walls, and it was empty, so black, so immense, that within it you could brush against appalling things, and feel roaming and prowling around a strange, mysterious horror. By Demer Passant. Choral illustration date back as far as the 15th century with artists like Hernemus Bosch create a nightmarish depiction of hell and torments of the damned. Over time, the art form evolved with illustrations such as Francisco Goya and Gustave Dore, pushing the boundaries of what was considered acceptable in their graphic portrayals of violence and suffering. In the late 19th and early 20th century, the rise of pulp magazines and dime novels brought uh, horror illustrations uh, to even wider audience. This publication often featured lurid cover art uh, designed to enti entice readers with promises of spine ugly tales within. The horror genre continued to develop, illustrators played a crucial role uh, in uh, shaping its visual identity, uh, helping to define the look and fill up iconic characters like Dracula, Frankenstein monster, um, and the countless creature, and uh, populate the worlds of Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe. Horror uh, was always uh, depicted differently and explained differently. For instance, define the weirdly horrible tale Lovecraft Road. A searching atmosphere of breathless and unexplainable dread of outer, unknown forces might be present. There must be a hint of that most terrible conception of the human brain. A malign and particular suspension of defeat of the fixed laws of nature, which are only safeguard against the assault of chaos and the demons of a plumb space. So, coming backwards, what exactly does horror mean? What makes it scary? How visuals affect art itself? And what is the psychological background of all of that? Before we dive into this creepy sea of horror illustrations, let's have a look at how text and images work together in that context. And by that I suggest to look at the world of Edgar Allan Poe, uh, and in case you lived in a bubble and don't know who Edgar Allan Poe is, uh, he is an American writer and poet who uh, are best known for his mysterious and macabre uh, stories. So this guy knows something about horror, I guess. In 1839, when Philadelphia's publishers Leo and Blanchers uh, released the book Tales of Grotesque and Rabescue, the journalist John Frost asserted the following. As a writer of fiction, Mr. Pope possesses from grave to gay, from lily to severe, with the niece and Beyonce not less remarkable than a failing vigor of his style and prodigious extent of his resources for illustration and embellishment. Indeed, Edgar Allan Poe was always someone who was interested in interdisciplinary analysis, uh, which helped him to really understand the interlinkage between images and text, and how, how they work with each other and how they enhance each other, and that helped him in his later texts, uh, uh, because he really started exploring how he can add visual richness into his stories. It is vital to add that he worked as an assistant editor on Southern Literary Messenger uh, from September 1835, uh, where he paid a lot of attention to book and journal illustrations. For instance, in his review of uh, Oliver Goldsmith, The Viper of Wakefield, a tale, um, Paul identifies that illustrations uh, illustration edition of that novel uh, was a real piece of art. Uh, he called it comprehensive work in which not only the text, but also the format, uh, typing, paper quality, printing, uh, illustrations themselves, uh, warrant attention. Maybe not really surprisingly, uh, many writers at that age didn't really like um, to add illustration in their text because they thought that it might, probably will, 
uh, add distraction from their uh, tales or stories, uh, uh, but Paul um, was different for that. Instead of considering the illustration as simple embellishments or as distractions um, for the reader uh, to disturb the unity of conception, Poe defend the informative value of image. According to Poe, the scant interruption that the reader can get from illustration uh, is balanced by the gratification it Afford, since it provides the possibility of comparing the conception of the author design uh, with those of the artists. In that sense, uh, an illustration might achieve a second task to inspire the fantasy of the reader so that they can reach a deep understanding of the text. I think uh, for the later analysis of her illustration, it's a measurable significant to understand what power means to illustrate, not simply to substitute for to adorn, but to illuminate or to shed a light. Consider everything that Paul said about horror illustration and horror uh, stories uh, and what uh, Lovecraft said, uh, we can say that visuals and combination with text give long-term impression which presumably unintentionally forces us to continue reading even if you are horrified, because uh, we we don't want to be left alone with our fears, I guess. Uh, and seeing someone like characters, feeling the same makes it easier to to bear. Um, and most of the times, the creatures, monsters are killed in the end or something else. Uh, uh, and everyone is sa feels safe again. So horror arguably comes with a pitch of hope inside when reading horror stories. Uh, illustration also keep the viewer or reader up uh, because uh, they give intrigue to uh, later post twists and intrigue to the story itself uh, because of this roller coaster of hope uh, during the story. So, before we step into the analysis and exploration of horror illustration, how they work, let's talk about serious shit. And by that I mean semiotics. Semiotics provide the method for dissecting a picture into its coconut thesis or science and demonstrating the relationship between them and our meaning system. The picture itself serves as the primary focus as in the location of the meaning in semiotics. Uh, the signified and signifier are two components that make up an image signals. The idea or object that the representation stands in for is known as signified. The representation itself is the signifier. Let's put it in simpler terms. Let's say you have an apple, uh, an apple that is drawn on a white piece of uh, paper. Uh, it's signifier. And you might think that it signifies just um, food or um, uh, or fruit uh, or something like that, something simple. But if we put that that signifier into a uh, black background or dark background and put something like um, I don't know uh, some kind of monster or creature, for instance, vampire near it. Uh, the apple, the signifier, immediately transformed in something more dangerous, horrific, something that might bring bring you threat to a life or whatever. Um, so we can see that the signifier. Um, signifies different things in different concepts, and that is semiotics, like in simple terms. In the principles of psychology, William James says, people are born with automatic visual detection mechanism for evolutionary threatening stimuli, such as snakes. These threatening stimuli are detected more quickly than non-threatening stimuli and are thought to have evolutionary origins. Efficiently detecting threats not up to provide uh, selected advantage for our human ancestors. That is what we can call uh, semiotics on a biological uh, level. Uh, and that brings us to one of the reasons why horror illustrations are dangerous, why are they so scary.
That is, we can say, is a semiotics on a biological level. Thus, when you arouse viewers' emotion, especially bad ones, you draw their attention to the artwork and compel them to care about its meaning. An effective art experience requires both caring and paying attention. Thus, uh, an authentic and impactful art experience might be upsetting and unpleasant. That makes understand that core is built on the ground of psychology. Most of the times, core illustration and core art in general uh, cause fear of I know because uh, uh, they show uh, unclassified creatures, uh, distorted features, uh, and it causes loss of control because we don't know how to deal with that shit. They are unnatural and they violate conceptual norms of society. Who knows what they can do? Um, and in uh, art, it can be really easily and effectively shown through uh, use of shadows and contrast because you don't know what's uh, inside shadows, do you? By placing characters, objects, and shadows, illustrators can obscure details and create an atmosphere of uncertainty and unease. Because of high contrast images, uh, so a stark uh, difference between light and dark areas, uh, can also heighten tension and make the viewer to freak out. By the way, it's not just fear that causes a uh, horror illustration to be uh, that scary. Uh, it's also about disgust, so it's a threat not only physical but also on a cognitive uh, level. Another technique frequently used by horror illustrators is the distortion of perspective. Uh, this can involve skewing the proportion of characters or objects, uh, creating unnatural angles, or employing a fish eye lens effect. Um, this distortion can make familiar scenes feel disorientated and threatening, uh, trapping into our primal fears of the unknown, as said before. Oh, and just a quick note, uh, I said before that we fear unknown creatures and monsters, and they, because they uh, cause us threat, uh, but actually it's not always the case. Uh, fear often depends on how you depict the scene and the character. Uh, for instance, let's take like Twilight, uh, where we have Edward, uh, the cute, um, really beautiful kind of vampire um, who is romanticized and aesthetically appealing, uh, who is involved in really toxic relationships. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, that's enough. We all, we all like him. Nah. So, taken from uh, distorted uh, angles and images, let's talk about the uncanny imagery. Uh, the uncanny uh, term refers to something that is both familiar and strange, uh, often producing feeling of discomfort and unease. Uh, and color illustrators frequently use uncanny images to create a sense of wrongness or perversion. Um, this can involve combining human and animal features, like verbs, depicting characters with uh, unnaturally allegated limbs or portraying seemingly ordinary scenes uh, that are aptly off in some way. Okay, uh, look at my eyes and say that you are horrified and don't read or watch horror because of that. Okay, now. So, the, for viewers to enjoy reading horror, they must also be aware that they are in safe environment. Horror and entertainment can trigger fight or flight response, which comes with a boost of adrenaline um, and dorphins uh, and dopamine. Uh, the brain uh, can then process surroundings and conclude that the experience is not a genuine threat. Unfortunately, there can be uh, enjoyment of horror due to trauma. It's plausible, at least in theory, that we seek out works that we know will hurt us, uh, intentionally or unintentionally. This idea, for example, uh, is elaborated in Susan uh, Hagen's version of the compensation theory. According to Hagen, 
Experiencing negative feelings in the context of an artwork is a complex uh, attitude compromised uh, of uh, direct uh, uh, response uh, um, and uh, meta response. At a level, we can acknowledge that our first order reaction to an artwork are acceptable and feel satisfied that they are, even though uh, on the first order level we might be wounded and grieved by it. For instance, if we see in horror movies something gore and we see ourselves in it because um, we had the same experience, we might be pleased that we can see something similar in films because it acknowledges that something like that uh, can happen to others. We can see how they acknowledge our feelings. And that might be pleasing, but it's also horrifying that we went through that. As Gombridge points out, uh, Freud believed that, uh, I quote, uh, only those unconscious ideas that can be uh, adjusted to the reality of formal uh, structures become communicatable. Uh, Freud, uh, as Gombridge argues, uh, uh, insisted on the degree of adjustment to the reality that alone turns a dream into a work of art. Uh, horror stories are not nightmares uh, transcribed, but fears um, recast into safe and communicable forms so, uh, of related yet separ separated reality. Um, in the act of fixing the shifting and subjective terrors of the subconscious into the uh, into the walls on paper, a writer or an artist of the tale um, or, or the artwork um, of terror created, created something quite different from the dream that was often the, its uh, inspiration. Uh, he moved in our words from the privacy. Uh, of the self uh, to the shared convection of uh, communication using language uh, to bad nightmares to culture. So we can agree that horror is pleasant sometimes. And I think that uh, David Hume, uh, the philosopher, uh, was quite enjoyable with as well. Uh, he uh, said that artworks give us unpleasant emotions, even trigger us in some way. Uh, which theoretically we should avoid, but the paradox here is that we don't, uh, which is fucked up. Uh, he called it a paradox of tragedy. He suggested that um, what was called conversionary account, so negative emotions are converted into overall positive experience. A rich philosopher also uh, copies Freud and Hum kind of combine them together and says that the nightmare reveals, uh, I quote, uh, deaths to be hit which were not hit. Similarly, the horror story transferred the elements of nightmare to explore the dark side of society and hint uh, at collective secrets. I mentioned quite uh, a bit about uh, graphic violence and gore and how it's related to trauma. Some uh, horror stories choose to shock and disturb the audience through the explicit depiction of violence and gore. Um, this can include gruesome scenes of dismemberment, uh, a, a visceration uh, or other forms of bodily harm. Uh, not everyone enjoys it, of course, um, um, but it can be an, an undeniably powerful uh, way to evoke fear and revulsion. As we could see, uh, horror illustrators or just art workers uh, uh, use this kind of trick-or-treat method, uh, which um, sometimes were quite <laughs> fucked up and shit about the words and I suggest to now look at some examples of the, uh, those illustrators. This is Odilon Redon. Well, not Odilon Redon himself, just his artwork. Uh, so this Odilon Redon um, uh, said in his review of the Paris Salon of 1868 
uh, he that he strongly invalidates naturalism. Uh, he writes that he could never be intransigent, oh, smart mm -hmm. word, uh, a member of an artist group mm -hmm. which limited itself to working purely from physical mm -hmm. reality. Well, we can see that uh, from his work. Thus, he introduced the concept of labere, I hope I pronounce it nicely, uh, in his art. Uh, it's, in simple terms, a reflection and realization of artist's personal view on surroundings, uh, which in, in his case we can later see is quite esoteric and spiritual, uh, and often depicts uh, a metaphor for, hu uh, for human desire to transcend into material existence. For instance, his Le Mateur, uh shows the rapid transition from outer space to inner space. Um, so, cosmos to earth, soul to body, referring to material. Yeah. Astonishing in Power Down Fusion, writes Marina Van Zell, is that both artists earned for rules of composition while portraying creatures that were unruly and decomposing. Although no, Odin Redon strongly reject realism in an art form, as he said, um, he still admired nature as a visual research, we, which we'll see in his mostly vibratory produce uh, of his prints, uh, in all likelihood uh, the first place from the sequence of Edgar Allan Poe, this one. It's entitled as The Eye Like a Strange Balloon Moves Towards Infinity. To make us gaze uh, at a world that exists but that will set them dare to face, Redon exercised mystery, agony and madness to frighten them and pull them, um, pull them uh, from the depths of the unconscious mind. Uh, Zygmunt Freud, again, um, uh, whose theory of dreams was published in some years uh, um, that Redon's apocalypsis was issued, uh, once wrote that the artist in general is a man who has turned away from reality because he cannot make peace with it. Actually, Freud added this as well. He finds, however, the way back to reality. Thanks to special talent, he molds his fantasy into new kinds of realities, which are acceptable by people, as valuable likeliness of reality. The writings of Edgar Allan Poe and some natural sightings served as, as inspiration for that balloon something something. Uh, the story of Hans uh, Fall. Fall? Whatever. It tells the amazing account of a Rotterdam inhabitant who managed to elude uh, his creditors instead of taking his own life. Fall uh, quietly makes a balloon at night, uh, takes off from Earth and lands on the moon. Here, as in most uh, post stories, uh, seem to be representing an uh, experience that goes beyond human body beyond life and death. Like Baudelaire, Baudelaire uh, the philosopher, and his peers, Redon appears to have thought of Poe as an attitude and a mystic. He probably interpreted a uh, foul voyage to the moon as a metaphor for the escape of the soul from earthy bounds which um, suits the ideology or rather view of his uh, world. Integrated these strange and unbelievable components of the disembodied head and the eye into a realistic image of the balloon rising over the sea. The stark uh, contrast um, makes a literal interpretation of impossible. As I said, Edgar Allan Poe was uh, quite a popular guy, and Odo Redon is not the only one who took high from him. Uh, so, this is Harry Clark. Um, and works for the tales of mystery and imagination are similar to Poe's erotic strain, a solid literal critic picture called Yellow due to their in internal and cognitive distortion of bodies. Border between uh, real and unconscious through symbolism uh, or as uh, Padraic uh, Colomb writes in the introduction of the 
tales of Mr. and the, um, and the Imagination experience on the margin of sanity uh, or on the border of unconscious. Like with Odell Rudon, um, Clark's work is not a direct interpretation of Poe's tales, but rather a visualization of um, the mood and atmosphere of the stories where abnormal become new reality. However, unlike Redon, Clark's interpretation of Poe was strongly influenced uh, by the brutality of the age he lived in. For example, uh, some of the artistic techniques like composition and color arrangements um, used by Clark uh, for one of the illustrations of uh, Poe's stories uh, the facts uh, in the case of Voldemort, oh sorry, Voldemort, uh, are echoed in the tabloid publication The Illustration Polyp News, which was uh, visualized murder committed by Robert and Nathaniel Combs brothers in uh, 1895. So who were that guys? Robert Combs uh, had stopped his mother while she was sleeping in her bedroom early in the morning. According to Kate uh, Summers Coles, uh, who was writing this case uh, in the newspa newspaper accounts of the incident. Then, leaving uh, the body at home, he and his young brother uh, signed the housekeeping money and went on a 10 day shopping, shopping branch. The woman in the lower left corner on the page. Uh, flies from the scene in horror and uh, the engraving in the illustration police in use arranges uh, the characters in the same manner that Clark would later employ with uh, Voldemort print. Of course, Clark didn't uh, just plagiarize uh, the illustration in that newspaper. I think he did it intentionally actually uh, to portray the fear engaged in the same visual shortland that his contemporaries would have been familiar with culturally, which makes them more terrifying, I think, keep in mind that such brutality can happen anywhere, anytime. Actually, I think it was a really nice uh, trick uh, for him to do, because illustration, the illustrators of that uh, days um, had to concentrate on enhancing the drama of the crime, uh, since the Combs case was only of the many sententialized crime stories. Um, so, uh, they contorted up situation and imagined feelings. Fundamentally, it was a problem for, that Clark struggled with as well. However, uh, he knew uh, how to convey emotions of surprise and terror via setting gestures and uh, official expressions, and uh, thus his style developed into more graphic, macabre style uh, where he could allow his, uh, himself to exaggerate emotions through symbolic atmosphere rather than just naturalistic gestures and facial expressions. Sometimes horror is not about uncanny creatures or surrealism like we've seen before. Sometimes it's the way you respond to horrific events that makes the art scary and disturbing. And this is what uh, Edward Gray uh, intended to do. He was actually not only an illustrator, but also a writer. And in his writings, he highlights a dark side uh, to the sentimentality caught uh, in didactic children books and popular fiction from 19th century. Uh, he depicts children who are abundant, run over, hacked to pieces, or simply wasted away. We all know who Charles Dickens is, uh, I hope. And um, he was also popular for the children things. Uh, but the happy en endings that Dickens envisioned for his orphaned heroes are not offered to them in Gorey's uh, um, works. Uh, Gory challenged these accepted norms of um, appropriate behavior and pleasant ideologies by uh, presenting a shocking ju uh, juxtaposition of black humor from the 20th century with images and icons um, from the 19th century, encouraging uh, his reader uh, to laugh at their own discomfort. 
Corey's denial of the comfort of morality rationalizes the death instead of shows the violent and brutality of the death, unlike uh, our previous illustrator did. By exposing the pathological sentimentality of the 19th century and any desire to return to it, his satire exposes complexity based on the illusions of a secure and comfortable past. In order to achieve this, uh, he deconstructed the technical of popular metaphors and placed them in unfamiliar environments that cut off the, their previous context. At the Victorian era, which uh, Gore tries to depict, obsession over death uh, was common um, because this was the reality they lived in, unfortunately. Uh, thus, over time, it somehow became romanticized and idolized. Uh, and Gore tries to deal with it by laughing at it. Let's have a look, uh, for instance, on uh, Gore's alphabet book, which is called the uh, Goshleba uh, Goshle Grounds uh, Dainis, or After the Outing, uh, which was released in 1963, uh, the first installment in a series of short tales um, titled The Vinegar Works. The book chronicles the death of 26 children, uh, each of whom stands for a letter in the alphabet. Sometimes, most of the times, the book called Sarcastical Rebellion against a, a view of ch childhood that is sunny, idyllic, and instructive. Uh, the children in the narrative die in rather ordinary way, for example, by choking on a pitch or tumbling down the stairs, uh, which contributes to the book Macabre Comedy. A is for Emmy who fell down the stairs, B is for Basil assaulted by bears, C is for Clara who was set away, D is for Desmond thrown out of sleigh, D E for Ernest who chowed on a beach, F is for Fanny sunk dry bleach, G is for George smudged on a rock, H is a Hector done in the thug. And etc. 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 This contrast and satire may be viewed horrifying uh, to, for some people because uh, if viewed realistically, uh, Charles death is not funny. It even might be seen mad and cruel to laugh at this, making the story um, and illustration scarier due to the abnormal emotional response. The most profound and enigmatic aspect of existence, uh, in Gori's opinion, are indescribable uh, and too elusive to be captured by the clumsy traps of language and imagery. He said that in order to pull off um, from the zen-like trick of conveying unexplainable, we need to move outside of language or hint um, at the world beyond via poetry or better still silence and its visual equivalent empty space. Because of that, uh, he leaves the graphic details up to our imagination with a macabre touch. For Gary, the best kind of terror is subdued. Uh, this we often can see uh, that his work are dinged with coarse sketching, with, which covers most of the space uh, in the illustrations. If we look closer at Gary's uh, illustration, I mean the writings, we can see a lot of metaphors. But first of all, what is metaphor? A metaphor comprises a metaphorical term, the vehicle, um, and a metaphorical connotation, subject, tenor, and their relationship or ground. Uh, literary scholars uh, have been analyzing metaphor for decades, utilizing Richard's uh, technique. Uh, this scheme can be used to explain visual metaphors in addition to verbal metaphors. According to this Richards uh, paradigm, Gori's um, main method of metaphoric uh, revision is to change the initial ground of a metaphor. Gori establishes um, secondary ground by taking a well-known uh, standardized vehicle and removing it from the applied context. Uh, this leads, at the very least, uh, to irony, frequently to a paroia, which is, uh, which is a situation in which the text and image contradicts itself due to uh, incompatible and contradictory meanings. 
Actually, um, it can be argued that uh, the unsettling uh, impact of Gore's creation uh, stems from a contemporary form of Jack humor, which is grounded in a uh, satirical subversion uh, of the Victorian tradition of sentimentality. Apart from that, uh, Gore also shared dark, dark romanticism and holy, considered burying secrecy for the sake of obscurity, uh, humor, and even a love of uh, 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 cryptograms, uh, um, which are a recurring uh, theme in the writings uh, uh, of a girl in pop. Yeah. Um, even though his drawings are um, childlike, I guess um, Gore is a disrespectful, even impolite, no fumbling attitude in many aspects, not my words. So we are sitting here uh, talking about metaphors in his works, hyperanalyzing his works, but um, in terms of this symbolic interpretation, Gore said, I generally think that what you see is what you get, but all those who want to read something into it, poor bunnies, then they can. All the time I think, oh dear, this girl doesn't mean much. You know, what is it all in it? Occasionally someone will, will come up to me and say, I figure out what your book was about. And I ask, oh what? And then they tell me something completely bizarre and I'll think, he shrugged. If that's what you want to see, it's okay with me. In fact, he believed that a lot of his work had to do with reality. He considered them to be really authentic. I mean, people endlessly not worry on about nothing at all. Terrible things happen or nothing happening. I don't know, I'm not a firm believer in cause and effect. Fantasy, I've always found a word I don't much care for. I also didn't like particularly the term macabre being used to describe him all the time. Gori actually was a believer in the malleability, inscrutability and deceitfulness of appearance. Um, and uh, Antigura once said, You are an old macabre of sorts, to which Gori said, uh, It sort of annoys me to be stuck with that. I don't think that so what I do exactly. I know I do it, but what I'm re really doing is something else entirely. It just looks like I'm doing it. And when interviewer asked to elaborate on this action, Corey was in favor as usual, saying, I don't know what is I'm doing, uh, but it's not that despite all evidence to the contrary. And that's all right, I think. Uh, I guess that's, it doesn't matter if you put symbolic feature into art or not, it still would uh, say something, it still will have a meaning. Uh, I think the typical question what the author wanted to say by that or this, for me doesn't say much about the art or the author actually. The real meaning um, lies somewhere beneath all of that. Uh, and I think you really need to dig into that, or really dig into yourself. I guess now ending and looking back to all this horror in investigation, the conclusion would be the question, what does the horror mean to me?